All right, guys, on today's episode, I'm going to take the uh, Templar 250 and the Explorer out to uh, Apex out at NOS. Got it loaded up on the uh, carrier hitch here. So, just got a couple straps. One, two, we got two back here. So, let's see how it does. I got this box loaded down with tools just in case. Um, and then I'll be carrying a, like a little Baofeng radio in here in case something happens and we need to get a hold of somebody. And then I'll have my phone holder here. Pretty much all loaded up. Got knee pads. That jacket's got shoulder pads and stuff in it, gloves, extra water, some lunch, helmet, some oil. I got more tools in the back, so uh, it's underneath that cubby. So, there you go. All right, let's go ahead and get on the road.
light's holding up pretty good. Uh, I can't really complain. As you just saw a giant hill. Well, I don't know if it's giant. I don't know. It's decent hill climb for me. I, I'm not very good at riding, so. But uh, yeah, I did a decent hill climb. Uh, I, I'm usually keeping up pretty good with the, you know, there's the Kawasaki in front of me. Uh, that yellow and white bike is a, it's a Husky TE 300 two stroke. And then my buddy's got a Honda, I think it's a CRF 650, I want to say. But yeah, this bike holds up decently well. So what's going on here. Alright guys, sorry to cut that last video. The GoPro overheated uh, when I was out there. I need to get a media mod. Uh, and just some few other things to make my GoPro recording a little bit better. But, as you can see, bike's here obviously. Yeah, I've been riding it to work um, lately. Uh, we're in the middle of buying and selling some cars, so I haven't uh, gotten a vehicle yet. But I'm at 1,034 miles. Uh, sock tires. So. Sorry about the interruption. Um, yeah, I'm still on stock tires. Like I said, I'd recommend getting, well, I don't even know if I said it earlier. I'd recommend getting new tires though. I mean, you could probably ride these out and be fine, but I don't know. If you, if you plan on doing any sort of road riding, I would definitely look into getting new ones. These are kind of almost worn out because of all the sit, street driving I've been doing. Um, like I said, I got this bolted on there now. So, get a little lock on it. I'll change that. I mean, it doesn't matter. It's more or less to keep the case secure. I really don't be putting anything in here that is all that valuable. So let's not show that or that. But yeah, just a little box that I've got. Um, phone comes out of it if I need to store something a little bit bulkier. But yeah, nice little box. Keep my registration and stuff in there too. Um, stuff for work. So. That locks up. I don't need to worry about it. So. This is the aftermarket chain that I got for it. Um, just I, I bought it on Amazon. Uh, and then this is the. Uh, so what you need for this, so this is a J, what is it, JRT, I think is what it is, JTR. It's a JTR or JRT 210 um, 38 tooth. So the tooth count, or the tooth is, uh, or the sprocket is a 210 sprocket, 520 chain pitch, 38 tooth. Um, and then this, I replaced my kickstand spring with just a spring I found at Home Depot. It's been working okay so far. Um, on the engine side of things, we really haven't had any issues. There's a gash on the case over here from where I've dropped it. So I, I haven't been kind to this bike. You know, I'm not that great of a rider, so I, I beat on it pretty hard, um, just like dropping it and stuff. And the only thing that's really ever broke on me when I'm, from dropping it has been the clutch lever. And I mean, go figure that happens with any bike that you drop. So um, I'm trying to think of anything else I could think of right now. Uh, oh yeah, the exhaust. So. As you can see, actually I threw the piece away. The plastic that was over this was melting, so I just cut it off. My legs don't come over here or nothing, so it's whatever. A concern I guess that you could have is like if you fall on this side of the bike, you could have a rock just come smoke that, bend it, hit the break the front flange or whatever or something. So, but uh, this was the, the the little bracket that broke on the exhaust. I, I paid a shop to put welds on it. Trust me, that's not my welding. My buddy that's a welder would freak out if I, if I was welding that poorly. <laughs> I don't have a welder right now anyway, so I can't do much of anything. Uh, I recommend a high temp red Loctite on this bolt and on your studs. I haven't had my studs back out, but the exhaust was, you know, loose. I guess the exhaust studs weren't really all that tight on the exhaust when uh, that weld broke, so it was rattling around. So, um, yeah, other than that, I haven't had any issues. I know some people complain about the rear brake light coming undone. I haven't had that happen to me. Seat pad, just found one on Amazon. It works well enough. It's not the greatest thing in the world to sit on, but you know, most of the time when you're on trail, you're gonna be up on your legs anyway. 
Another thing though about this, I'm five foot ten. These uh, bars are pretty low um, for like stand riding. You're pretty hunched over. So um, given how close the bar is to you, this, I think this is this chassis is a 150 cc chassis. I don't think it's a 250 cc chassis. Um, I think this design is based off of a KTM from like the mid 2000s. I think it was their 150 chassis that this is based off of. But for someone like 510, these bars are like a little close to you and a little low for you to like really comfortably stand up and, and ride. You're, you're pretty low, you're having to hunch your back over. So that's one thing to consider. Um, I haven't, uh, haven't had any problems with the brakes or anything. Um, I, the top shock mount was squeaking. I went ahead and shot, got that bolt out, shot some grease on the bolt so that way it would stop squeaking. Um, but other than that, got Nibby Carb. I'm trying to see if I, that's, that's a part number or not. I don't think it is. I don't know what that is. But, you know, this thing's played in the sand, it's played in the rocks, it's played, played in some small streams or whatever. I've taken it through some stuff. And it's, it's held up decently well. I'll say be careful about your electrical connections behind the headlight. They're not all waterproof. Some of them have rubber inserts behind them to kind of make them water resistant, but they're not, they, they don't, not even all of them have that. So just be careful about getting water up in this uh, headlight area. Um, don't go in anything too deep or hit something too fast. But yeah, good bike overall. It's holding up well, does me well. Uh, even with friends that have, you know, the Japanese you know, the 650, the 300, uh, Husky, and the, um, the Kawasaki. Uh, even their bikes, I can, I can keep up. It's more of a, a rider problem. I mean, obviously top speed, I'm not keeping up with a lot of those bikes. Maybe that KLX 250 I'd keep up with, but the TE 300 and the 650, obviously those are just bigger bikes. I'm not keeping up with that speed wise, but for what this has done for trail rides, it's kept up with everything I've done. I think it would keep up for anything any beginner to intermediate rider would would want to be doing anyway so uh, overall recommend for people that are tinkerers uh people that are a little bit mechanically inclined and don't mind kind of you know checking on the checking on the bike and doing that if you want like a zero maintenance bike i don't recommend this go get yourself a uh, crf like 300l or whatever the, their their bikes are the klx 250s or or whatever don't don't buy this this is definitely more of a tinkerer type bike you're gonna have stuff go wrong you're gonna have stuff come off you're gonna have stuff break um it's not perfect but it's a 1700 hundred dollar dollar bike that i've gotten street legal that you know rips just as, as good as anything else does for me and my friends so oh i don't know if you guys can see it well update on that bracket it's been it's been holding up pretty well so made that just out of a little piece of aluminum so but yeah, uh, other than that, don't have much else to say. Hopefully I get my media mod in and that, and uh, I can do some long recording sessions on this on trail. Um, I probably won't talk over those sessions just because even with a media mod, you know, wind, wind noise and rattling around of the bike and all that, you're not gonna hear me all that well. The quality's not gonna be that good, but I'll leave the GoPro quality or audio in so that way you guys can hear what the what the bike sounds like and, and hear all that, but I won't be talking. So anyway, that does it for this episode of Crow's Garage. I will see you on the next one.